Nino Inote is a Ghanaian musician resident in Accra. But more than a musician, he's also a visual artist. He uses an eclectic array of artifacts, memorabilia and miscellaneous pieces as his medium to assemble complex sculptures that reflect his equally complex persona. Ninoy has turned his home into a shrine to his musical journey. Entitled the Anya Arts Library, I went along to visit to learn more about him and his creations. What is essential about the building is the, the leatherwork. The leatherwork belongs to Amino, who's been doing a lot of work over the last 20, 30 years with me. So he has disassembled the body of his works into this uh, redefined building. Many of his works are practical animate entities, which he's able to interact with for real world functionality. I can just pull out this instrument. Not the sculpture. Oops. And fix it with the north piece. And create a cell. The sound of the forest. So then it goes back into the sculpture. Ninoy is immediately ready to draw curious observers into his world of almost mystical creations. making this for how long? Well, the concept started about maybe 1990, about, you know. The concept is one of my, it's one of the first early concepts, but the music instruments have changed over the years. There are so many other things you could do with, you know, decorate it, put things on the head, you know, xylophones, you know, all kinds of instruments the head can carry. So there's no real center to the pyramid. So in terms of performance, too, there's no real center. You know, the music you know, varies, you know, depending if you want to play this. You can feature this as a musical and as a solo instrument. And you can play it as an ensemble as part of it. So there's no real center. You can shift to any other one, you know, and play another other thing all together. Mm 
Nino's residence and the arts library compete in a friendly rivalry for space. Each room poses a dizzy onslaught to the senses, just striking that magical spot between amazing and overwhelming. So this is a metal, me metal phone based on a xylophone. saxophone part like um, the levers and parts and you know keys and all kinds of things and you know rearrange to show the rays of the sun let's, let's start on the inside Here was the original gallery. Over the years, most of the activities are centered around here. Performance and recordings and all kinds of things have happened in this space. So it's like a veteran space actually. This section of the wall is about Egyptian spirituality, mythology, belief systems. And then there's a jazz section which really is probably defined as notebooks and liner notes. In that section, which is here, you find a lot of jazz representations, connections. In Ganaba, for instance, who had gone to America to play jazz, came back from America playing African music. But he saw the connections between the two and wanted to bridge the disparities. Within the various sections of the Arts Library, there are references to so many giants of musical history, including the likes of John Coltrane and Bob Marley. However, it's homage to the legendary Afro jazz initiator, Kofi Garnabar, that occupies a dominating position of the display, as well as elicits some of Nimoy's most poignant memories. Towering over everybody, not because it's greater than everybody, but because his concept was to bring all these kind of creativities together. And in the context of that, he's a he's jazz man. The man who much suggests the mighty elephant drummer. You know. So in the sculpture behind, you can see him almost riding an elephant. That's him there riding the elephant. That's the ears of the elephant, that's the trunk of the elephant, that's the tusk of the elephant. So the title of Donald Machirema actually is depicted in this sculpture, which shows Ganaba riding an elephant. And that is the title he has owned, Donald Kumachirema. So me, I'm a saxophone player primarily, you know, a wind player, and Ganaba is a drummer. So when a drummer and a wind player meet, there's always a conversation and especially when they are inspired by the same musical traditions. So when we met, we just started playing, you know. He plays what he wants to play, and I follow what he plays. Mm -hmm. He's a leader, mm -hmm. I'm just the novice, you know. And it's easy to be the novice, because you wait for him for the leadership. Mm -hmm. Wherever he goes, you follow. And that is more harmonious than the other way around, you know. And because we are all competing with our instruments, where he follows, I follow, and the music multiplies, and, you know, create some interesting atmospheres. Mm. 